now 56 pass. I wasn't prepared to translate that as I was doing that little tease. Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At. See, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. um, Katie said she thought it was about. Yeah. Oh. But I'd never heard or it. Around I'd never heard it about. said. I'd always seen around. the mark, but never yeah. heard it said. And then yeah. it sounded stupid when I said it. Violence at NBC. There it is. <laughs> Violence at NBC. G E com. I mean, what, what is internet that, anyway? What do you write to it like mail? Over the course of just two decades, the internet and the devices we use to connect to it have become seamless parts of our everyday existence, radically transforming how we communicate with each other and how we receive information about the world. Now, along comes the great revolution of the internet. The internet revolution. The internet revolution. Definitely, this is the internet revolution. In the industrial revolution, if you wanted to change the world, you had to open a factory. In the internet revolution, you only need to open a laptop. But while everyone seems to agree the internet has revolutionized the world, nobody seems to agree whether this revolution has been good or bad for democracy. Does the web help people to be better informed and to be better citizens? Or can an online free-for-all actually be a threat to democracy? Some argue that the internet has given democracy a shot in the arm by giving us unprecedented access to unprecedented amounts of information. It's what I call the democratization of information. You don't have to wait for the evening news to tell you what happened that day. Everybody can access it at the same time. I say having people talking to each other about real issues is always good for democracy. In the process, providing us with a potent tool for exposing authoritarian power. Egypt's revolution gave social media credibility. Egyptians have broken down the barrier of fear. If you want to free a society, just give them internet access. Social media was effectively designed as a tool for the empowerment of the user. While others say the internet is making us more stupid, distracted, disengaged, clueless, and ill-informed. With all of this distraction in the internet, you're not able to actually learn things, therefore you're becoming more stupid. Especially since the rise of fake news. Fake news articles may have influenced the presidential election. Cambridge Analytica used that information harvested to push fake stories and conspiracy blogs to people who might be susceptible to taking them as fact. Clickbaiters plus crazy people are all coming together and creating a global fake news empire. So which is it? And how are we supposed to decide who makes the better case? At a time when the internet and the broader digital revolution are transforming pretty much everything in their path, it's never been more important to ask, whose revolution is this anyway?